Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Geraldine Brosnan, and I work in Mary Immaculate College as Director of Student Life. Um, my role in the college is to provide strategic direction and bring operational cohesion to the broad area of student life. And that's quite a big brief. So in the main, I look after the student support services, work very closely with the Students' Union and, of course, with teaching faculty. And this is my first Instagram Live experience. So I'm giving you all a wave and look forward to some questions coming in. Um, I can see that quite a number of people are just joining, so I might introduce myself in a minute again if that's okay with you. And I'll give people another few minutes to join. Oh, I have a question coming in. <clears throat> Is there orientation for parents? Yes, every year we start off our orientation on our Limerick campus and at the start of the week, usually it's Monday evenings, and we have orientation um, in the, the very first evening for parents starting at 6 p.m. On the Thursday of the week, we move to Thurlis and we have orientation for our parents of our students in Thurlis uh, at the same time as students are attending orientation themselves. Of course, we don't know this year yet because we're awaiting, I suppose, more direction uh, guidelines from government around the social um, distancing protocols that may be imposed. So it's a little bit early to say. I'm waving again, lots of waves here. Um, uh, orientation is a key part of the academic year because it allows students, I suppose, it's their first time in the door as a third level college student and they get to see the buildings, they get to get their ID cards, log on to our um, ICT services, get to know how to use Moodle, which more than likely will be increasingly important in the coming academic year. And I can see here that I have another question about our student supports coming in. Um, quite a wide range of student supports in Mary I. We're very proud of the range of supports that we have as a small institution. And we very much pride ourselves on our supportive, caring, um, welcoming environment. We have an access office, which um, covers the access and disability brief. We are unique in Ireland in that we have an, um, an academic learning centre, um, uh, which is basically a centre where if you are want some assistance with any aspect of your learning, you can call down to the academic learning centre. It is open between 10 and 12 and 2 and 4, Monday to Thursday. And we have a receptionist there who will find out what your inquiry is and then, if necessary, make an appointment for you to meet with one of our um, academic staff. The academic staff who work in the area are very experienced. Um, there is a question here now I can see coming in. Is there an introduction, introductory course for the online system for Erasmus students? Yes, absolutely. They will all be um, Erasmus students form part of our orientation program. Um, very nice question here. How are student parents supported? Sometimes, yes, we have um, students who are parents and we have, we're unique in Ireland in the, so far as we have a student parent uh, service, uh, which has been in existence for 
um, 12, 12 years approximately at this stage and there is a coordinator available um, who provides a, a pastoral service and advocates for students and liaises for them. It can be very challenging of course to go back to college or to go to college if you have children. You're not as free and easy as somebody who, who, who doesn't have children um, can be and it brings its own complexity. Um, the other supports that we have then are we have a counselling team, we have a very active chaplaincy, um, we have a medical centre and we have a wonderful students union and we work very closely with the students union. Um, so very often students if there's any form of an issue or some, some, some matter they want, they they'd like to discuss, they'll often go to the students' union in the first instance and if it's something that can be um, helped by the college then the college will, um, the students' union will contact um, somebody in the college. Um, so I tend to work very closely with the union actually and I have to say it's great. Um, now I'm going to go back again to um, orientation because I've, I've had a number of questions. Um, orientation tends to be a, a week long. Um, oh I have another, sorry, I, I'll flip over again. What kind of exam supports are there for disabled or students with a disability? That's a great question, thank you. As uh, students with a disability we encourage to register with our access office and we provide whatever supports we can reasonably provide according to whatever recommendations come in with whatever reports are provided. So that, um, so for example, sometimes students might need help taking notes and a note taker might be necessary or extra time in examinations or they may require um, extensions to assignments or specialist software or hardware and we will um, and we, we, we work to um, very closely with the student to see what works with them. A lovely comment in here from French Notes. Hello. I, I cannot recommend MIC highly enough. And uh, I actually, I remember this student. Uh, lovely, to, lovely to see you again. Um, so we, any student with a disability, whether they have come in through the DARE route or whether they have a disability that they just want, um, that, that they need support with, so we encourage them to make contact with the Access Disability Office. We actually encourage people to try and do this a little bit in advance as well, so that um, we're all organised for um, the start of the academic year. So if, there, if you have a disability um, and you're interested in, in accessing some supports, it's very important that you do contact our Access Disability Officer. Her name is Maura Moore and all the details are up on the college website. All the college emails are the same. It's maura.moore at mic.ul.ie. I had another question that came in to me um, before before this um, and I have one here actually that just came up on the screen as well so I have two to answer. What advice would you give to students starting college this year? So this is a very unusual year for people. Um, I always tell students the same. The first year in college and certainly the first term is really just about finding your feet. The more you immerse yourself in the experience the, the better you will enjoy it. So I would participate in everything you can possibly participate in, attend all your lectures, reach out to people. We have people who come to the college from all over the country and very often a little hello to whoever is sitting beside you in a lecture theatre can make a big difference. So I really participate fully in the orientation programme um, and reach out to people and, 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 and join activities. Um, also over the coming months I there will be materials posted on our college website and it's always a good idea to to read those in advance. Very often we get questions from people and they sometimes it's, it's caused a source of stress whatever it is that the question might be about but really the answer was available there to them all the time. Um, we tend to post everything up on our orientation web page so over the coming months we'll be posting up our orientation guide. We will be um, 
posting up our uh, student handbook as well as the schedules for orientation. Um, I had a question that came in on email actually, which was, uh, uh, is there anything different or unique about the student experience in Mary I? I'd like to think there is. Um, we're a smaller institution than many of the bigger universities. We're a very friendly institution. Um, we care deeply about our students and we want to see all the students that come into us graduate successfully. Um, and in all my years working in the college, which at this stage is about 20, I have never come across a problem that we couldn't resolve in the main once we knew about it. So the key thing really is to reach out and find somebody who can help you. I'm always available at the other end of email, so I'm a good person to um, to, to take down my email address uh, if you have any questions or queries. And the address is Geraldine, G-E-R-A-L-D-I-N-E -E, dot Brosnan, B-R-O-S-N-A-N at M-I-C dot U-L dot I-E. And I will redirect then your, your inquiry to whatever office or service. Another question came in there a few minutes ago about financial supports available to students. Um, and I suppose these are unusual times and um, certainly there are a range of financial supports in addition to the SUSE grant. Um, two in particular, that uh, three really that stand out I suppose. One is the 1916 bursaries. Um, in the college, the application for those will be opening at this time, uh, this month, and the government have given us a number of bursaries for students who are in receipt of what's known as the SUSE top up. It's a competitive process. Um, secondly, we have once the college year starts, students can make an application for what's known as the student assistantship fund. Short, for short, it's called the SAF, and that's funding that each college in Ireland gets allocated. Um, the application for that is online, and that is a very useful source of funding for students. Um, our Students' Union also have a hardship fund, which again can be very useful if somebody, if, if, if something happens and you find yourself somewhat stuck on a once-off occasion. Um, we we do like to know if people are are, um, are struggling in whatever shape or form and if it's something that we can help with, we're always happy to do so. Now I'm just going to go back in here to, um, I had a question um, that came in again online. Um, scholarships, absolutely. We have quite a range of scholarships in place. And again, these are all posted up on our college website. And I would um, encourage you to go to the website. It's, it's a very nice website and quite easily accessible and get to know how it works. Um, there are a range of scholarships in place. There are our entrance scholarships, which go to students with the highest points in the Leaving Certificate. There are, um, this year we have a, a whole new range of sports scholarships. There's a CEO points concession scheme and then there are also other ones. We have the 1916 bursaries. And um, and again, I would encourage you to go to that page on the website. It is under our home page and it says scholarships and awards. Does anybody else have a question there for me? There is one actually, sorry now. There's a very nice one here. What role do chaplaincy play in the day-to-day -day work of the college? Actually quite a big 
role. Our chaplain makes a lovely point every year that chaplaincy in Mary I is for people of all faiths and no faiths. Um, we have a lovely chaplaincy room where you can go in and make a cup of coffee and um, have some biscuits and sometimes there are sandwiches there which prove very popular at lunchtime during the winter months. And it is... Um, uh, people drop in and out all the time. We have two of our third year art students who work there as part of their co-op during the academic year and they're there to um, they call in um, and you can sit down with them. Um, I have another question here about a lovely question. Thank you. When would you be able to access your, your transcripts roughly? Um, well, student academic administration are the people best placed to um, to give you the the precise date. Um, so I would encourage you to email that it's student academic administration. The the office manager there is Carrie Ryan, at, so Carrie dot Ryan at mic dot ul dot ie. Um, here's a, a a nice one here. Can you talk? through the academic learning support services for students. Yep, the academic um, learning centre really, um, we provide a number of supports, I suppose. Um, with the, the main one really is support around academic writing. Academic writing is a very different type of writing that most students have not been exposed to in the past. So it is quite a formal style of writing. It is, well, actually it is an extremely formal style of writing. Many students find it quite difficult to get um, to get to grips with this this type of writing um, because you just have never done it in the past. So um, the uh, the centre there, will we have quite a large staff across our two campuses between Limerick and Thurless. We have approximately 20 staff. Um, so it's really a very busy centre. So if a student is, for example, struggling with getting going on an essay, they can call down to the centre and make an appointment to meet with somebody who will help them get going. Or if you're wondering if your referencing for it is correct, um, again, you can call down to the centre. Um, we have, a, we have um, someone in our Thurless campus and also, on, uh, as I said, quite a large team on the Limerick campus. It's a really busy unit. Last year we dealt with 2,550 students. We offer um, additional then subject specific classes in things like um, Gaelga obviously and ICT and we also run a math support unit as well for students who are taking mathematics. Uh, question here a nice one. What aspect of your job as director do you enjoy the most? Um, I suppose the part I really enjoy is uh, getting to know our students and working across all the various functions in the college to try and improve things uh, for our our students and to um, and, I, and the college is a very nice place and it's a friendly place and we work very well collaboratively so um, I quite enjoy that and um, as well trying to I suppose work on new initiatives that help improve um, our overall student experience. Nice question in here from Elaine, are there mental health supports? Absolutely, we have a team of um, professional counsellors on campus and um, it's quite a nice busy office as well. There is a daily drop-in from 11 to 12 where students can just go up and, and drop in with any, any issue and then after that um, students are, are often assigned uh, an appointment. Um, look, a good question here, are there any financial supports if I run into difficulty? Again, absolutely. That We have the Student Assistantship Fund, the SAF. There is also the Students' Union have a, a hardship fund um, and they would be the two main sources of funding internally. Uh, good question from Lauren. How long do lectures last? In the main, 45 to 50 minutes. Um, you're allowed really, um, sometimes they'll go for the 50 minutes, but you're allowed a few minutes in between lectures in case you have two back to back to get from one location to another. Um, that all takes time. So it's rare that you would have like a double lecture, like a double class in school. They tend to be that 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 sort of uh, 50, 50 minute slot. That's a really good question, Lauren. 
Uh, do you have a medical centre on campus from Trish? Good question. We do, Trish. Yes, absolutely. We have a, we have a medical centre with a receptionist, uh, two nurses and a GP who comes in in the afternoon. Um, we, uh, in the morning, if students aren't feeling well, uh, we they, they can come down and they'll be screened first by a nurse. Often students, um, they may not need a, a medical appointment with the, with the college's GP. Um, but they, they, it may be something that can be dealt with by the nurse. So the answer is yes, we do. Now, I'm quite conscious of the time. Um, question came in here on uh, my email. How does the college help students make the transition from secondary school to third level? And I think we, I suppose, we start off there by really the orientation week or the welcome week is really important. Um, and I have a lovely question in here. Are you generally shown where the rooms are for your classes during orientation? Yes, you get a, a guided tour of the campus during orientation and each the the locations of each are, are the room the way we assign our room numbers is explained to you so for example if you have a lecture in um, the foundation building it the code for that is F so you'll be told it's foundation building room 208 and so Two then would tell you it's on the second floor and then it's room eight on the second floor. So yes, you are. But uh, when you go on your tour, you, you get to know really your way around the college. But that being said, it does take a little bit of time to get to know, um, to get to know, I suppose, the lie of the land. It's um, it, the, the college, the campus is big. It's not huge, but it is certainly, certainly big. Um, but we're all here to help and you will find that there are people around that you can stop and ask very easily. Um, a question from Trish. If lectures are cancelled, how are you informed? It's a really good question, Trish. Um, you are informed you, when you come to the college, you sign up for a text alert so you can be informed that way. It, um, uh, if lectures are cancelled for whatever reason, it rarely happens. But it, again, so first of all, text alert, and then there are also electronic screens that go up. A lot of our staff use Moodle, which is a virtual learning environment, and you there's a really good facility on that that you can send out a message or an email to all your students. So for example, if I was feeling sick tonight and couldn't be in class tomorrow, I can send out an email and that'll come in to your phone or whatever device that you're using. What do I do if I, good question here from Elaine, if I fall behind in my assignments? I think the first thing you probably need to do is if you are, there are two things here. One is you need to deal with the matter. So you need to go to your lecture and explain that you have perhaps missed a submission date for whatever reason. Very often students miss a submission date because there is a, 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 an issue um, around, it um, might be a personal matter, it could have been a bereavement, or it could be illness, and often it's a case of requesting an extension from the lecturer concerned. The If it's something else to do with really organising your time or getting going or setting goals or you're struggling to get something done, then you really should seek support from the Academic Learning Centre. Um, as I said, we have quite a large staff, a very good, helpful staff, and we'd be keen to um, to see you through. Our system uses a mixture of continuous assessment and also end of semester examination. So all the assessments that you get very often have uh, marks assigned to it. 
Um, it's a good system because it means, I suppose, from our perspective, you're kept working uh, throughout the semester. And for your own perspective, it means then heading into exams, you have quite a body of work already completed. So that's, that's a good question. Really good one. Um, another one here. Will next semester be mostly online? And uh, that's a really, I suppose... It's, it's hard to give a def definitive answer at this stage, uh, Gemma, but what I would say is um, we, will, we will be working with public health recommendations um, and, as, uh, and we will abide by those. The, the, the most critical thing here really is the health and well-being of our students and, of course, of our staff. Um, so we will be... I suppose working within whatever the parameters are that are issued by government over the coming weeks. Being honest personally, I would expect um, a degree of online delivery. All our ICT skills have improved no end. Well, speaking of myself. Um, and now I'm quite conscious of the time. I have to head off again in a minute. Um, uh, oh, nice f uh, final question in. This is the last one uh, I'll take unless something comes up really quickly. Is the campus wheelchair friendly? Uh, yes, it is. Although parts of the campus are old, the, the, there are facilities there that the doors are electronic and um, we have lifts in the older parts of the campus and the new part, of course, is, is, is very wheelchair friendly. Now, I am going to finish up because I'm uh, conscious of the time and I uh, wish you all well and thank you very much for joining me this morning.